I would love to know how you communicate layoffs to affected individuals. Yeah, thanks for asking this question. So to be honest, laying off is one of the most unpleasant tasks of management. So a lot of the feelings come into play, whether it is about sympathy, sadness, anxiety, and uh, that's why it is super important to communicate this in the right environment and in the right way. So to communicate to affected in individual, this is how kind of I will approach. Um, so I'll set up a one-on-one -on -one meeting with them and uh, be direct, concise, and compassionate. I'll say something like, uh, so I have some bad news to share today. Uh, we are restructuring our organization in an effort to reduce the costs, and that will reduce in elimination of some of the positions. And unfortunately, your position has been selected for layoffs. And today will be your last day of work. And in this folder, um, you'll find information about severance package, benefits, and other details. I know this is a lot of information coming to you at once. And I'm really sorry that I have to relay this message to you. So definitely thank you and appreciate your hard work and dedication over the years. And uh, I'll be surely uh, glad to provide a letter of recommendation or any reference or any way I can help you. So something like this, I would approach in terms of like a scripted way. Makes sense. So you're saying you're being very direct. You're letting them know, hey, you know, this is not going to be a pleasant conversation. Your, your position has been laid off. Here's the benefits. Thank you for your work. And you're also letting them know that you're willing to support them after the layoffs, right? Um, like that connection's not going to be broken. If they need a reference, if they need letters of recommendation, you're more than happy to help. So I, I think those are definitely, you know, in the, the best things that you as an engineering manager can do uh, in a scenario like this. Um, I, yeah, I would love to learn in, in your words. I mean, those are those are my reflections from what, what you said, but I would love to learn in your words uh, why you would approach lay, like communicating layoffs in this manner. Yeah, I think uh, I second whatever you said. So it's mostly like, I mean, layoffs can be devastating for the employee for so many reasons. It's about income, career prospects, future. And uh, at the same time, these employees have friends at the company as well. So it, word will get back to the remaining employees as well, to how those people were treated and uh, that can cause reduced productivity, low morale, and even resignations from the top empl em employees as well. So in general, for both the employees, both the individuals, as well as the rest of the team, it is really important to treat them with compassion and respect. That's why, I mean, I set up one-on-one -on -one meeting. I don't send an email uh, because it's rude to send just send an email. And I prepare them by saying, I have a bad news. I share, state the details, but do not overshare. At the same time, because of some legal requirements and HR reasons, we are usually not allowed to share a lot as well. So I could share as much as I could. And uh, even if it is if it is about uh, like if it is about uh, performance reasons, then this is not the not the time to discuss about what could be better in terms of performance because these decisions are usually irreversible. So yeah, in general, I this is the time where I can provide what help I like I can share what help I can provide in terms of recommendations, references, and ask them any questions they have. Got it. Got it. Got it. So that makes a lot of sense. And you mentioned that you want to make sure you treat these people who are impacted well, uh, not only because, you know, they're, they're humans, too. They have their own families. This is their career that you're um, impacting, but also because word might get back to the team if they were not treated well. Right. Um, well, I mean, all, as, as with all layoffs, people people will definitely notice if a key part of the team is missing. Um, and once that word gets back, I'm sure it's going to affect the, the rest of the team, right? So after these layoffs happen, after you communicate layoffs to the, uh, the impacted individuals, how do you relay this message and what are the things you do with the rest of the team? Sure. So rest of the team, uh, if the leaders under me, that's one thing that I want to make sure that uh, we are aligned 
because their partnership, their leadership will be valuable to ensure smooth transition. Uh, in general, when I'm meeting with the team, I will communicate mainly four aspects. One is vision and the next steps, reasoning why it happened, and uh, third is how much they are valued, and uh, and uh, encourage like uh, it, it communicate ways encouraging them to take good care of their mental health as well. So in general, from vision and next steps, like we like we discussed, so layoffs are going to cause some rumblings, at least uh, in the new hires as well. The biggest question in many people's mind is, is the company even going to survive? Or should they start also start looking for the new job? So it is really important to reassure them of the company vision, the team vision, how team is valuable to the company, uh, what are the long-term goals of the company, and uh, definitely those are achievable with everyone's success, everyone's hard work uh, and dedication. So all these things are important. So that's why vision and next steps, whether like if there are additional responsibilities, if uh, people are, I mean, additional responsibilities are because of the layoffs, then those are also communicated. So vision and next steps is the first thing. Then second is reasoning. As I mentioned, there is, there is not a lot that everybody can share, but if it is about organizational restructuring, cost cutting, and even a violation of code of contracts, so sometimes these things can be shared. And uh, I'll proceed with caution. I'll mention what is the reasoning behind it as much as I can. Then third is about uh, how much they are valued. There can be fear, speculation, whether if this person is terminated, is it my turn next? I mean, that person might think, could he or she be next? Or uh, it's important to nip these kind of gossips in the bud. And I'll sincerely praise all those employees for the great work and how high performing the team members are so that they feel valued and uh, they are like kind of calming them down towards such kind of gossips and speculations. Mm -hmm. And the fourth one is encouraging, like finding out ways to lighten their mood, acknowledging that this is a stressful condition, situation, and uh, I'll encourage people to take some time off to absorb the news with the remote team. I mean, if this is team meeting, I'll encourage people to reimburse the lunch. I'll plan happy hour after some time and kind of find out ways to encourage uh, good mental health for the people. Uh, Got so it. Relax. Got it. So, okay. you know, you're like re re reiterating the, the vision the reasoning for you're, you're letting the team know of like, you know, some maybe some reasons that you're able to share legally about the layoffs, you make sure that you praise the team. And then you you also make sure you have compassion and, um, you know, keep mental health in mind with the, the rest of the team, just so that uh, mm -hmm. we're still able to maintain velocity, because, yeah, after layoffs, I've, I've definitely also seen that teams are very Velocity def def definitely takes take, takes a hit when right after layoffs because people just feel stressed or they just start to question things in the company. Sure. Yeah. Um, and after that, uh, even like uh, if it is about one on one discussions or even uh, g getting people uh, an opportunity to ask questions. So that's also Q&A is also an important one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'd love to co continue this thread here. Right. So besides Q&A. Is there anything that you do just to make sure employees don't feel too stressed the days and weeks after a layoff? Sure. Yeah. As we mentioned uh, in layoffs, like they, there are a few things that are hit. So like project planning. What if like there was a project that one person was working on who was part of the layoffs? So I want to make sure like there are kind of four steps that I follow. One is making sure I realign on project planning and execution. Second is I continuously monitor workload of of the team. Then third thing, continuing to delegate appropriately. I'll explain that. And uh, then last one is about motivation. So continue motivating people. So <clears throat> when we talk about project planning and execution, so I will collaborate with uh, different stakeholders and make sure expectation is set correctly with the revised capacity. So timelines can be challenging, should be challenging, but they need to be realistic based on 
the new capacity. <clears throat> then in terms of workload, there are it's some people that uh, they try to fill the gap of those who left the company out of fear. And uh, sometimes it gets to the extent of burnout. So those things, I need to make sure that I continuously monitor workload so that people are not stressed out and they are creative and productivity, product, productive. Then delegation, I usually uh, definitely take into account the people's interests and goals. And I'll continue to do that uh, rather than just having them do the work of somebody else, uh, which they are not interested in. And then lastly, continue to pe motivate people, remind about the company vision, appreciate, praise, whether it is in the form of even cash incentives, awards, gift cards. So continue to motivate people for their great work. Got it. Yeah, I mean, that, that, this is a pretty comprehensive list. Um... Is there anything in particular you would do if there's like just one individual who's just particularly stressed out that you can tell just based on one on ones or um, just interactions with them? Is there anything that you, that you might do to alleviate stress for just any particular individual who's just particularly stressed out? Yeah, so in that case, uh, the one on ones are a good way to learn about people and kind of get a sense of whether they are stressed out or not. So I'll try to identify what is bothering them. Uh, I'll ask open-ended questions, might be not because of the layoffs, maybe it is standard, like maybe because of conflict with someone else. So that needs to be resolved in a, a positive manner using some conflict management strategies. Or maybe it was it is because of temporarily work-life balance due to maybe some issue happened over the weekend that they have to work uh, longer hours. So in those kind of scenarios, I do encourage people to take an extra day off or relax the next day to maintain their work-life balance. Or it might be because of their personal issues as well that I have to handle with compassion, remind them about the various benefits, leaves that companies offer. And also even it can be, um, I mean, I, I, might I might want to suggest them about the different apps, meditation, subscriptions that company can offer. So overall, it depends upon the situation. I, I will definitely try to figure out whether it is related to layoffs, whether it is not. And based on uh, how the conversation goes, I'll have different options for the person and make sure that uh, the person is also back to track. Got it. Got it. Great. Um, well, th those are all the questions that I had today. I think these, this is an interesting discussion. Uh, not only because of the current challenging economic uh, times, but also I think if you're h hiring an, an injury manager or a software development manager right now, these are real problems that you might have to handle on the job. And companies might ask these kind of questions just to understand how you dealt with these people problems on the job um, if they were to hire you as an EM. So Niraj, thanks for having this conversation with us. And I know this was a uh, very reflective, but also a, a little bit of a challenging conversation to have. So really appreciate that. And for the viewers at home who are watching, good luck with your upcoming engineering manager interview. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below to let us know that this video is valuable for you. And of course, check out hundreds more videos just like this at tryexponent.com. Thanks for watching and good luck on your upcoming interview.